O oh, great one, give me power that I might crush my enemies and rend them to naught. I swear a pact to you, O oh, evil one, O oh, fey one, I swear upon my eternal soul, O oh, eldritch one, I will grant you my firstborn child if you will but give me of your power. Hello, and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great Player. Well, the Warlock. It has been asked for by you since I started this series, as a matter of fact, on the different classes. Why the horns? Well, I feel Warlock should have horns. That's just my personal take. Now, I have as yet to see a Warlock being played correctly. And... I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. Warlocks are similar to priests in a lot of ways, at least from a narrative perspective anyway. A warlock has made a pact with a power, with an entity, with a being that has the capacity to bestow power upon the warlock. In exactly the same way that the priest has made uh, supplication has made a lifelong commitment to a god and the god gives the priest power in return for that devotion. So warlocks have these patrons, these deities, these aliens, these beyond the pale creatures. And I haven't yet seen a warlock being played that's acknowledged that. Oftentimes the warlocks are just played because they've got cool powers and abilities and the players want to explore that, rather than the pact that has been made. Now, that creates a very interesting character and a very dangerous character at the same time. So let's unpack why that is the case. So if we look at the merits of the warlock, the warlock has at its base one of the most interesting character backgrounds that it could possibly have. Your warlock, in order to exist, has to have made a pact with a being of supreme power. That's a backstory. You don't have to worry about almost anything else except answering the question, how did your character make that pact? How did they make that pact? And here you can go ballistic. So you can have this amazing backstory as to how your character came to be the conduit through which this alien entity, this supreme being, is expressing itself on the planet. Very different from a cleric or a paladin or anyone along those lines because this being is specific to you. It's not like a deity who has thousands and thousands of worshippers. It is a pact made between you and this being. Now that, apart from the backstory, allows you to create the being. You should be doing this with your GM, of course, chatting to the GM and saying, well, how do we do this? How, what, what is the being's power? What is, where does it come from? If the GM will tell you that information, the GM obviously will work it out for themselves as well so they can give you a much more interesting story. But you have this phenomenal starting position in terms of your character's story. The character themselves, over time changes they morph they evolve they gain the powers that their entities bestow upon them these are not magical effects these are actual effects actual changes that start to manifest in the warlock over time making it a lot more of a direct involvement between the warlock and their patron again priests have this with their deities as do clerics and uh, paladins but not to the point that it has this personal involvement. The patron, the patron is, the, 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 is morphing, is molding the warlock for an end, for a purpose. The patron doesn't just give the warlock powers for no reason. There's a grand picture here that the patron, the patron can see, the, the, the deity can see, but that the player cannot see. So you as the player have this phenomenal story base from which to operate that now leads us to the negatives the negatives of course is that the warlock is and i stand to be corrected here 
a fairly tarred with the same brush type of character. One warlock is pretty much the same as the other. Yes, the pacts manifest themselves in different ways. To a degree, but everyone has still got a pact. Everyone has still got a supreme deity that they're working through. You could argue that priests, all priests have the same gods. Uh, all priests have gods, so they, they're pretty much the same. Yes, except that the Warlock's power base is much more limited in terms of the spells they have access to, in terms of the abilities they have. So for me, a Warlock is a fairly cookie-cutter-styled beast. Warlocks are Warlocks are Warlocks. Now, I know that sounds a bit silly because wizards are wizards are wizards. Not really. You get different types of fighters, different types of paladins, different types of clerics, different types of wizards, but you get pretty much the same type of warlock. They've made a pact, and that pact is going to manifest in a specific way because the entity is giving power to this person, the warlock. So I find warlocks from that perspective can be fairly cookie-cutter, cookie-cutter-ish, and uh, you have to really, really work on them to make them feel different. Now, they also are not a specific, they're not damage dealers necessarily, they're not party protectors, they're not controllers, they're not tanks, they're not fighters, they're not DP, they're a mixture that puts them in the middle some way. So that is also a negative. They're not sure where they stand within the party, they're not sure exactly what they contribute to the party, because it's such a, a, a non-specific class if i can put it that way so what are the potentials then of this incredibly rich backstoried character who's a bit wishy-washy when it comes to what they actually need to do within the party well the potentials are for an advanced storyline your character has got an inbuilt narrative that there is an entity out there some way that has significant amounts of power and is using you to express it why are they doing that? What's their purpose? They have to have some kind of reason. They're not just going to give anyone, um, you get some power today. You get some power today. You get, Everybody gets power today. They're not going to be doing that, generally speaking. They're going to have a specific goal in mind. And that means that you have the potential for these amazing stories to unfold. It's just about trying to realize those uh, stories and to follow them through. There's a great opportunity for conflict. Now, most of the pacts are with elder gods or uh, fae or alien entities that are outside our realm that are trying to manipulate us. This gives us phenomenal potential for conflict, far more so than any of the other classes, because the conflict is all through your character's head. The deity of a priest has a manifesto. That manifesto is accessible by everybody. A cleric of an evil priest, of an evil god, is going to do evil things. And anyone can read that book and they can go, oh, yeah, well, he's a cleric of an evil god. That's why he's, you know, cutting off the heads of all those babies. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly acceptable. No, carry on, George. No, 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 you're all right. We know what you're doing. We know why you're doing it. A warlock does not have the same luxury. A warlock's communication is generally almost one way the great entity speaks through the warlock into the world the great entity uses cloud formations as one of the examples given in the book to communicate with the player's character but only that character can see it everybody else just sees cloud formations so there is a huge potential for a frankenstein like story to happen where the player's character is frankenstein's monster you are being imbued with power to enact poor old Victor Frankenstein's plan of whatever. But you can fight back, you can rally it. And there's nothing that says to me that the warlock can't ultimately hunt down the entity that is giving them power and destroy the entity to take the entity's place. That's a huge, huge potential storyline. I mean, that's fantastic. That's wonderful absolutely wonderful so the potentials for the warlock in, in story are huge the potentials within the party of course is that they're this slightly mysterious character and again that starts to raise warning bells to me when there is a character who has something going on inside their heads that can control them or that can induce in them to do something that might be contrary to party 
I get nervous because it means that you could have a disrupting influence within the party that derails the adventures because they're busy stuffing around because their Patreon has said you must sacrifice a Vestal Virgin on the full moon next month. Otherwise, I'm taking all your power away. So there is a potential for party conflict that's good insofar as the warlock is maybe a bit more brash or bloodthirsty than the rest of the party but it could also be bad in which case the warlock is working against the party because their deity happened to say so that would be the fault of the gm to cause that to happen but the player should know enough to be able to rein it in to try and keep it on track with the rest of the party however that might not happen so that always makes me very nervous that there's a potential for party dissolution because of this individual's invisible friend that keeps giving them advice when we come to the types of warlock this is where i really really had to rack my brain and try and think of something that differentiated different types of warlock and the only thing that really comes to mind are the different pacts a warlock who's made a pact with a fey creature as opposed to a warlock who's made a pact with an alien creature that's expressed in role playing that's not actually expressed in class abilities or in powers on those kinds of lines and well i'm sure you can think of many examples of different types of warlock but for me i've only ever encountered one type and that's it it's the history it's the background it's the story that makes it so interesting the rest not so much if you have got different types please by all means put them in the comments below so that we can see just how diverse this character could possibly be i must admit i haven't come across a lot of warlocks and i've only played them once or twice in my playing history since they're a fairly recent addition to the entire narrative of fantasy as a playable class anyway um, maybe i'm wrong here correct it please so we can all improve when it comes to stories, well, that's part and part of the potential, isn't it? You've got all of these packed stories that can come out. If your GM knows what they're doing, they can use your deity, your whatever it is that's giving you your power, to give you these little side quests and side missions, which will force your character to, character to go down a certain path. Personal quests, of course. If your character is not too happy with the deity that they have shackled themselves to, Maybe they're trying to find out how to unshackle themselves, how to switch to a different, uh, you know, demon or underworld um, banshee type monster. Maybe they want to work for a fae for a little while, do some gardening on the side. Either way, the warlock is, in my opinion, a very interesting class to play a very challenging class to play in terms of party dynamics in terms of keeping that entity going now why did i say that i have never seen them played correctly what i have seen is players who have taken the warlock gone i like this i'm going to follow this as my line and then they forget about the pact they forget that they are serving for the power of their individual master they are an apprentice they are learning from their master very seldom have i seen a player take a moment to go and quietly commune with their master and see if they can glean any more information from them i've been an apprentice editor in my time i've been an apprentice cameraman and you frequently turn to your master and say am i doing it correctly sir is this how i should be handling this is this how i should be handling that asking questions i don't see that in any player who's had a warlock before that kind of seeking and desperate to learn and being the darth vader to emperor palpatine there isn't anything like that happening so that's something to think about with the warlock is that they're far more of a role-playing class than they are a technical damage dealer or a armor protecting group controller the focus should be on the narrative in my opinion when it comes to warlocks well i hope you found this useful hit the like button if you did hit the subscribe button if you want to see more i think we have now done all the classes i have seen a lot of requests for different types of classes and uh, with your permission i think we can move on to say star wars is the second most popular genre of role playing i stand to be corrected cthulhu is a big 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 contender there as well as of course there are other systems out there that have different classes 
The more interesting, the more exotic type of classes, well, those I don't necessarily come into contact with on a daily basis, and I'd be hesitant to give my opinions on those. But if there is a class that you think that I've missed, oh, psionics has been requested quite a lot. Psionics is a very interesting space, and I remember when they brought psionics out in the second edition, it was a very interesting time, and one of my very good friends ran down the passageway shouting, I'm a psychotic, I'm a psychotic, I'm a psychotic not realizing that that was slightly different to I'm a psionic, I'm a psionic, I'm a psionic. Until next time, however, I wish you and yours the very happiest of playing. <laughs>